welcome. Today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest uh, people when it comes to the heroes of the faith, mm -hmm. and that is, drumroll, <laughs> Moses. So, of course, everyone has probably have heard of him at one point in their lives. I mean, there's even movies based on him. I yes. personally like the animated, although the live action, the Ten Commandments is really good too. Nice. Yeah, so you should check those movies out if you haven't <laughs> seen them. <laughs> Um, but we're going to go ahead and talk about him and give you guys some context so those movies even make more sense and stuff. Um, but, again, we always want to read the book. The book's always going to be better than the movies, but, yeah, you know, visuals are always cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, so that's what we're going to talk about today, so please stay tuned and let's go ahead and talk about him. So, I'm Merari. And I'm Elda. And you're watching Let's Dig In. All right, so we're going to be talking about Moses, which is a lot already as it is to cram into, you know, our little little segment. So we're going to see how many segments <laughs> this ends up being, hopefully just two. Yes. But anyways, let's go ahead and go where we always start out first when we're doing these, and that's Hebrews 11 all the way to verse 23. So we're pretty close to finishing this thing yeah, up. So almost there, almost that's there. pretty good. <laughs> so we're in Hebrews 11. 23 and he actually has quite a few verses all the way to 29 mm -hmm. so he has a kind of a long section compared to um abraham yes. who also had a huge section all right so let's go ahead and read it so hebrews 11 23 through 29 so it was by faith that moses's parents hid him for three months when he was born they saw that god had given them an unusual child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. 27. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing um, the king's anger, he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. 28. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. 29. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. All right. So just by that, you can tell there's a lot of different things. And this is just up until when they, you know, were freed from Egypt. So, And this isn't even like all of him. It's just yeah, exactly. like, I guess, what's considered the major points of his life. Because there's so much more that is told about him in the Bible as well. Yeah, and we're going to go through all of that as well. But just to, yeah, exactly. It's just like, this is just a small part <laughs> of like this. This is just, you know, little pickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And one of the crazy things too is like verse 23, that first one, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months. Right here, we already see the great faith that his parents had in the first place that like, I guess, um, was passed down to him in a way yeah. too. Um, because to hide his, this child for three months, like, and this is some, a child, you know, a baby, newborn baby that cries and everything. So imagine trying to hide this child for three months. Mm -hmm. And for those who might not know what is going on, what do you mean, like, hide this child for three months? If you guys remember from last week's discussion where we talked about how Joseph through his family, they all came to Egypt, and from there they multiplied into this great nation. So throughout all that time, little by little, um, the the leaders of Egypt, or I guess the pharaohs, must be in, mm -hmm. um, started making the Egypt or the Israelites into slaves. So at this point, where we pick up in Moses' story, they're all slaves. Yes. And now, in order to keep control of the population. They, are, I don't, I don't know how often they did it, but obviously it was often enough that they would murder children. Yeah, it was said in Exodus one fifteen through seventeen mm -hmm. that the midwives were told to actually kill all the baby boys at one time. Mm -hmm. It was like, and it, I doesn't give you a specific time, but it does say it was about three years minimum. It does tell you a little bit that oh, like age-wise, yeah, yeah, baby boys were being killed. 
and like take them out, wipe them yeah. out. Yeah, and they did this for population control. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically, this is what they were doing. So around when Moses was born, they were getting, obviously, they were already preparing to do another sweep through yeah. the population. So it just tells you how intense things were. And if you actually like, if you guys know the story of Jesus, this is actually foreshadowing for Jesus' story. I think that's I'm so you, cool. It's all like that. <laughs> connected. <It's> all connected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because in Jesus' time, they were doing the same thing, and then it was children three or younger as well. Yeah. So it's kind of really cool how all this, like, you know, history repeats itself yes. <laughs> type of thing. Uh, but that's another discussion. Let's go back to our discussion <laughs> yeah, here. We've got a lot to go. Over. Exactly. So right here, we just see this great faith that the parents had. Um, and knowing that there's something special about Moses that they saved him and um, saved his life and, and he even tells like doesn't really say here in Hebrews but there's even that part where his mom you know the famous part where he puts him in a basket and sends them down the river yes of course the movies make it a little bit more dramatic I don't know you know, <laughs> <laughs> if it was that crazy. <laughs> right? The animated one makes it so dramatic, but I don't think it's that was that crazy. It's probably more closer to what um, the live action, the Ten Commandments, probably was. But regardless, that's still a lot of faith to place in a basket and down the river, like yes. especially for a mom to just to let go. Like mm -hmm. that must have been hard, especially a baby. Like I would be so worried. Like he's gonna roll himself over. He's gonna try to sit up or something. What if he spits up on himself and chokes? <laughs> like all of that these things would be in my head. And she was like, "I have faith in God. Here you go." Right. So it just tells you not only again he's a miracle child, but regardless of that, it just just tells you the great faith and this great purpose that God already had p prepared for him to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. So that's just right there. But let's keep going, though. <laughs> There's still a lot. I mean, I definitely encourage you to read the story. It starts in Exodus, where we finally moved out of Genesis. So we're in Exodus <laughs> <Yay>. 2. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we're in Exodus 2 now. Now, I'm not going to go through all his history. We're, I, like we've been doing, let's just go over the lessons that are learned um, throughout his story. So I definitely encourage you to go and read it. Um, there's a lot of interesting things when it comes to Moses and though, yes, they portray him as this great big thing. He actually is really relatable and how, um, you know, how he came about to that. So it just tells us that we have that potential as well. Yes. All right. So first things first. So the first lesson that we learn through Moses is God uses the humble not the proud. And this is something that I guess that we've been on, like we've been the last... repeating it in different <laughs> ways, but it's the same. Yes. Um, it just tells you that, you know, there's always something in us that God wants to, you know, get rid of. Yes. You know, it's always something different for it's everybody. It's always a process. Yes, it is always a process. And this is definitely something with Moses as well. Um, of course, it's a little bit different from the others that we've been speaking about, which is also something that, you know, makes us realize like, okay, it, we're not all the same and we're not all like, the processes are all different. Yeah, he doesn't, he's not looking for a specific person. He doesn't need like this exact <clears throat> person is like the way you are. He will change you to what he needs. Right. Mm -hmm. And make you to the image of God, right? Yes, that is <laughs> All cool. right, so it tells us in Numbers 12, 3. Um, yeah, I know. I said Exodus, but now we're in Numbers. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> now the man Moses was a very humble and more than all the men who were on the face of the earth. So right there just tells us how humble this man was. He even has a verse telling us how humble <laughs> this man was compared to all the different people in the world. So yeah. it just tells us. And how humbled he was, and I say humbled, it's not like he was humble at all, at, at all times. At all times, there you go, thank you. But he was humbled. <laughs> he was humbled, so he had, um, yeah, because it just tells us a lot. Yes, he was born into slavery, however, for those who do know the story, um, though he was born into a slave, when, um, when his mom did put him in that basket and sent it down the river, it was Pharaoh's daughter who found him and adopted him into the family. So basically, he was adopted. He went from slavery to the richest family in Egypt, literally, yeah, literally. the palace. He went from slavery to, pal to the palace. So it just tells you, like, his character, he can be, he could have been conceited, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it just tells us right there. Uh, so, and this is like his first 40 years of his life. So Moses enjoyed the life and the benefits of being part of the royal family. So he had the education, he had the riches, he probably a, a nice big room to himself, <laughs> some chariots, want. some horses. <laughs> but I think too with reading <clears throat> Moses and how his mother did send him down, <clears throat> I think from the beginning you can even see God's mercy and God's plan in all of this because how we were talking about this. So it was obviously not pharaoh's daughter's biological child so she couldn't nurse this child she didn't give birth to this child but in god's mercy it ended up being his biological mother who ends up being his nurse who ends up nursing him and caring for him for the first couple years of his life which i think just goes to show you that god had a plan like such a great plan that he was like you know what i know that this was hard for you he's like and even though this will not be known as your child it will be for a while known as Pharaoh's daughter's child, you're still going to be a part of him. You're still going to see what I have planned for this child that you so faithfully put in a basket into the river. So this is the mom, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's just a blessing, I guess, from, you know, trusting in God and allowing him to be in control. Mm -hmm. But yes. Okay. So going back to Moses. Um, so we already know he grew up in the palace. And then we, if we go all the way to Acts 20, and even tells us that he was beautiful too. So yeah. not on top of that, <laughs> he was like a good he was like a good catch, I guess. <laughs> he had it all. Right. <laughs> and then not only that, if we go to Acts 22, it even tells us that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and deeds. So right there just tells you like he was probably popular <laughs> you know <laughs> he learned a lot he probably learned that's where he learned all his leadership skills pretty sure um yeah. but it, it just tells you everything all his at attributes that he has so it would have been very easy for him to just be like you know look at me i got it all <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah exactly i'm that israelite that you know was lucky and got everything you know kind of thing mm -hmm. um and i'm pretty sure at one point he probably even thought that he would be the one to help his fellow um, Israelites to free them um, and you know took things in his own hands unfortunately that ended up him <laughs> murdering someone so yeah. it also even tells them tells you a little bit about his anger issues but that's sort of another discussion <laughs> um, but it's just it's a it's a great it's crazy thing and then that just how God needed to humble him and you know of course what happens after he kills that Egyptian is that he flees to the desert. So he went from the palace, now he's in the desert <laughs> where he needs to actually work, he needs to actually put effort, and it's not all yeah. handed to him. Um, he has to maintain himself now. Right, he had to be a, a shepherd, and a lot of people, even now, I guess, I mean, who looks, who wants to be a shepherd? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so it's a lowly job, I guess, and yeah. the Egyptians despised. Of course, because this is what the slave, the Egypt, uh, the Israelites did uh, for slavery. They mm -hmm. they were shepherds, so it just tells you right there. So he went back to the lowest, from the high to the low. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we can see that little by little, little the proud and mighty Moses became a humble and meek shepherd. Um, so and then again, he was here another forty years in the desert. It's called the land of Midian. So he was there for forty years. And right there, he just learned the love, caring, and uh, being humble before the Lord, kind of. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> through, through him uh, becoming a fugitive, God used his circumstances to turn his life around. And this is also tells us, too, because true hum, um, hum, humbleness <laughs> is finding your confidence in God rather than ourselves. Again, uh, when we accomplish certain things, we want to give God the credit who helped us do it. We don't want to say, oh, it's, it was because of my efforts. Yeah. It's always important, and this is something he had to realize as well. <clears throat> okay, so that was the first one. So the first one we learned is God uses humbleness and not the proud. So again, there's always something in, and I think this is why they always say that we're like the the clay and stuff because god's just trying to mold us yeah. taking out the impurities um and it's just the same thing with us now it's just asking the lord what is it that I, that needs to be removed in order for you to develop that closer relationship with god and to order to fulfill that purpose or that will 
or God's will as well. Yeah, for him to use you in the way that he intends to use you. Mm -hmm. And it's always, it's, every, it's different for everybody, but there's always something that needs to, you know. Yes, always. Be taken out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and then lesson number two is God will fight our battles for us. And this is, of course, seen throughout his whole thing. And of course, the biggest one being the parting of the Red Sea. I mean, not only is it huge <laughs> in like the Moses movies, but like there's even like adaptations who try to do this thing as well. Yeah. Um, so it just tells you God's power and when we allow him to trust, when we trust in him and allow him to fight our battles. So not only did God send the plagues, um, he pulled them out of Egypt and not only did he... Um, help or did, not only did he God free the Egyptians but they uh, they fleed with treasures they had abundance they left they left so rich it was insane <laughs> uh, and all these things oh goodness sorry I'm sorry guys <laughs> I can't speak right now I'm dealing with something right here <clears throat> okay so God never loses the battle. So it just tells us right there, what is our mindset? Like when we are going through things and when the dust finally settles, like where are we? Do we allow God to just take control or we try to take matters into our own hands? So mm -hmm. um, so we, we just need to like, I guess, have that perspective. Like where do we stand? Um, I think it's also how we keep saying is remembering <clears throat> that God is faithful and his word won't change for us. His promises will always be kept. So it's like with Moses, he knew he had a higher calling. He knew he was meant to go somewhere. So he wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to do it. He's like, maybe, yeah, he was scared or feared it or whatever, but he still did it. And God still kept his word to the end. He was like, you know what? Yeah, like I got you guys. Just follow me this way. And he was like, okay, follow him this way. <laughs> and yeah, it wasn't easy, but he did it. And that's I think that's something to always take away from all these heroes of the faith is, yes, a lot of them, were scared or didn't want to do it, <clears throat> but they did it. Whether it was in fear, whether they were shaking the whole time, they did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And one other th things that we need to realize too, when God will fight the battles for us, is that when we are going through these different things, to remember all the different things God already has done in our lives. Because sometimes that's the thing that we tend to forget. And this is something that was big with the Israelites under Moses, is that despite seeing this grand miracles you know we're talking plagues we're talking egyptians egyptians giving the israelites all their gold and jewelry everything yeah. and we're talking about parting the red sea and all these great miracles and what do they do they complained all the time to moses <laughs> so it just tells you that when we're going through these different battles or we're going through these different struggles to remember everything that God already has done. And because we remember that, we know that we're going to overcome whatever is in front of us. Yeah. And this is something the Israelites, again, would constantly forget to the point where they were even mad at Moses for taking them out of slavery. Like, can you imagine the logic? Right? Like, hey, we <laughs> you just did like this. You, you took us to... out of slavery. Yeah. Now we're stuck here. Yeah, like, like, if, like, do you want to go back to slavery? <laughs> like, the logic that they had. And this is something we do at times, too. So, I mean, in the end of the day, they are, we're literally like them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is why it's super important to constantly remember things. And this is why the... Um, Israelites had all these different festivals because it was that constant reminder like, hey, this is what God um, God did for us. So we need yeah. to remember all of these things. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, all of the other thing is to not be afraid of the different things that are coming at us. Um, and um, Exodus 14, 13 through 14, this is where the people were afraid. So this is mm -hmm. Moses right here speaking powerfully, like in the name of Jesus right here, or in the name of God. Um, it says, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So again, we ourselves... Tambien, same thing. We do not want to be uh, afraid and just place the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, help me with my fears and all these things. 
and uh, now like even to the yeah because a lot of the times our battles are spiritual battles something mm -hmm. like it's in our minds so we need to just rely on the lord and even same thing joshua 1 9 and just remind ourselves of these different things joshua 1 9 says be strong and of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go and this is a promise right here too so again just grabbing a hold of god's word and despite the different things going on is constantly reminding ourselves who is by our side and who is that <laughs> is the almighty god the all-powerful the supreme ruler the uh, the vast universe yeah. um your personal protector um all these different things that we could describe god and we got to remember he is with us throughout everything and i think something to remember too because i'm sure <clears throat> moses was probably afraid too like we're stuck between a sea and the people are trying to kill us but it does say he took this in the great step of faith so yes you could be afraid but you got to take that step of faith and know that even though you're afraid god isn't he's like this is where i'm leading you like why are you scared keep going like this is where i'm telling you to go it's always a reminder to always keep your faith no matter how scared you are the fear how she was saying he is for us and he's not against us like everything he's doing is for us it's for mm -hmm. our betterment it's for us it's a blessing for us yeah exactly yeah so as long you can always count on the fact that god never loses a battle right there <laughs> write it down yeah, somewhere plain and simple. <laughs> so he will always win and we will always gain victory um, reign victorious with him as long as we are on his side so I'm, so rem let's remember that so lesson number two right there was god will fire our fight our battles for us yes so number three the third lesson that we learn so to moses is that great power comes great i'm pretty sure you guys thought responsibility but it's accountability <laughs> i guess that's what i like spider-man <laughs> <laughs> yes but it's accountability so it is very important that we you know we own our mistakes um you know we, we are human so we do tend to <laughs> you yes. know sometimes you know fall <laughs> we tend to fall but we need to remember we need we are going to be held accountable and this is something huge with moses as well did mention earlier about his possible anger issues now the bible doesn't say he has anger issues but just like from the few it's a little implied yeah <laughs> yeah only, oh, it's, yeah it is very implied one because how angry do you have to be or like how willing had had moses have to be to murder someone yeah so it just tells you a little bit there and then the fact that between moses and god they were constantly mad at israel mm -hmm. and luckily these two and moses and god were never mad on the same day <laughs> that is the greatest thing for the israelites because if god and moses were both mad on the same day the israelites would have been wiped luckily <laughs> they weren't <laughs> um but it just tells you as well i mean granted i mean who can blame him we're telling he was what 40 years in the in the wilderness in the desert with yeah. uh, and, i mean we're talking about all, at least a million people that came out of egypt like it was a lot of people so imagine being the leader of all these people i mean who can blame him for getting mad but um the thing is that regardless of our situations we need to be careful because we will be held accountable this um and of course this brings us to one of the biggest things in um moses story which was on um, in kadesh where god told him to speak to the rock and he didn't speak to the rock if you guys remember what did he do he hit the rock instead <laughs> and the thing is that and now that doesn't say anger issues <laughs> <laughs> right exactly right well yes and no because the first time uh, and the reason he, this whole rock situation is because the israelites were complaining that they needed water and that they were going to die of thirst you know you be in their dramatic selves <laughs> the drama know, like we do too <laughs> sometimes you know yes. like so hungry kind of thing <laughs> yeah so they were you know saying about water so the first time god did tell him to hit the rock and water came out however the second time god told him to speak to the rock but moses ended up hitting the rock not only once twice and because of this he lost the privilege to be um, able to enter into the promised land now you think well this sounds kind of harsh and 
yeah, <laughs> but you got to remember, because he is in, a, in the position of leadership, he is mm -hmm. held to a higher accountability. So then likewise, for those of us as well that are in leadership positions, like we have to re always remember to like keep our cool. <laughs> yeah, um, together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we need to be careful, guys. So this is something that we learned, especially through him. Now, of course, we look at him, we're like, oh, <laughs> it's not a big deal, but it, I mean, he is setting that example of like, if yes. God is telling you to do it a specific way, we have to make sure we remember to do it that specific way and not do it our own way. Again, because if we do it our own way, we're saying like, okay, God. <laughs> We're our own gods is basically what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, like, I know what you want me to do, but I'm going to do it this way. So, I mean, I see where God's coming from. And, I yes. mean, I'm pretty sure you would be the same way. Um, if, imagine yourself in leadership position, and you're telling um, someone to do a, a something in this way, but then they do it a different way. I mean, I'm pretty sure you would be upset, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely that's what happened here. Um so we need to remember, again, you follow those instructions and those warnings that he gives to all of us. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then we must realize that those who are in leadership positions are held to that stricter account accountability. If this is not only just in the church, <clears throat> this is also something that um, even in our laws are implied, when, especially here in the United States. This is something why we have certain rules because of that accountability that we need to place on our leaders. Yes. So this is not just biblical. I mean, this is probably where they pulled it from. So it is kind of biblical, <laughs> but it could be applied in our everyday lives, not just in the church, you know, kind yeah. of thing. <clears throat> Yeah, so because of Moses let his anger and emotions get the best of him, he became a bad example to the congregation. So and it also tells us right here that we're never too old to be tested. So if you think about it, 40, 40, 40, <laughs> he has to be 120 at this point. Yeah. Um, so it just tells you, like, it doesn't matter how, old, how young or how old you are, you're going to be tested at any point in your life. Yeah. And so I think we got to be ready. It also shows <clears> how his anger issues and his hard-headedness also translated to the Israelites because they ended up getting stuck for 40 years wandering because they were well that was the Israelites all doing yeah this is why Moses wasn't able to get into the <laughs> promised land they're so, just all hard <laughs> it's just we're the same way too so we can't just be like oh these guys but never got it to see this too and learn from this mm -hmm. like seeing how yes they got stuck here <clears throat> they got their hard-headedness but to understand and learn from their mistakes like okay yes they didn't want to so they got stuck there so now we need to understand that even though we're between a hard place God wants this for us and he has a purpose and it's a good purpose it's meant to bless us and not hurt us we need to understand that and we need to know okay I know that what I want to do is I want to kick the rock but he said talk to it so I got to go talk to it yeah yeah exactly so again we just need to remember to just know calm down <laughs> take those moments yes. and just remember okay what is it that God actually told me to do mm -hmm. all right so those were the just the first three we still have a few more um but just to recap so the first one was was with great power comes great response going backwards sorry with great power comes great accountability and the second one we said was god will fight our battles for us and then the first lesson that we learned was god uses the humble and not the proud and that last point, too, that um, with the whole speaking to the rock can also be applied to him, you know, trying to weed out that anger issue that Moses still had mm -hmm. to humble him even more. But again, working on that patience. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. have a lot of patience I think that. patience is something everybody will definitely have. We need it. We <laughs> we'll need need it. <laughs> that God will, you know, place in for us or have us learn <laughs> all right guys so that would complete our part one so um stay tuned for part two where we discuss more on moses again i encourage you to definitely read the story again it's an exodus starts in exodus 2 um the gist of it is in exodus <laughs> yes <laughs> um, but a lot of it i mean he he literally wrote the first five books of the bible it was this five or four I think it was five. I'm pretty sure it was five. Uh, I have it written down. Whatever I have is getting to me, guys. I'm going to blame that. Five. <laughs> it's five. It's called the Pentateuch. I think that's how you pronounce it. I forgot. <laughs> um, correct me if I'm wrong, but yes. So it's just, he has a lot. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot because not only 
it gives details of what happened in the desert and all that stuff. So I definitely encourage you guys to give that a read um, and just learn how God, God's patience versus uh, Moses' patience and <laughs> vice versa when they would get mad. Um, it's interesting. So I yeah, encourage really you to is. read it. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, go ahead and pray. Um, Lord God, I just come before you. I give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And we just thank you for this time together, Lord. I just thank you for what you're doing. And in this moment, I ask you just to reveal your character within us, Lord. What is it that um, we need to remove, Lord, that we will just be humble before you, that we will just um, rely on you, that we be confident to say that we trust in you, that we um, allow you to be in control, Lord, and help us just to be sensitive to all these different things you are telling us, Lord, that yes, you're telling us the direction to go into, but Lord, help us to also understand the ways you want us to do it as well, Lord. Not only to know the ending, but how to get to that ending. Lord and we just thank you we just lift your name on high in the name of Jesus we just pray amen, amen. all right guys so let us know what is it you found interesting about Moses um, we, again we're gonna keep talking about him so we'll see you guys next time all right bye <laughs>